She's in need of a work shirt. Unfortunately, yes. Uh, okay. Ten millimeter by seventy. Oh, fuck, I hate this mm. guessing game. What? What is there to guess? There's three, four different. The way that they don't really individually label these. Okay. So. Those are the big ones, right? I don't know. Welcome back to yet another 213 Crispy video, and today we have ourselves a Toro Super Bagger. Now this particular mower is my new personal mower that I had purchased and done some trading around. Um, I will get into that here in a few minutes, but um, a lot of people don't know anything about the Super Baggers. So, I believe from the research that I've done is it operates on the same deck platform design as the Super Recycler but it has a larger chute extension on the rear for the bag and that's why it's called a Super Bagger. Um, they were made for just a few years I believe it was three from 2000 I think it was 12 11 12 and 13 I think is what it was um, some main features for me from using this for the past couple weeks that I have enjoyed that is a difference from the recycler is the handle assembly. It's not all plastic. It actually has a, a nice contour to it with foam grips. Um, the aluminum deck, it's a lot lighter than the recycler so it's easier to maneuver. Um, it also has a Honda engine that's actually 190 cc's, which for me is a bonus because it actually allows you to cut a lot cleaner. Um, the 21 inch deck I think has a lot to do with that as well. Uh, I won't go into the detail of the deck yet, but eventually I'll do a comparison between this and the recycler side by side so you guys can have some ideas. That'll be an upcoming video. Um, but mainly the Honda engine, the aluminum deck, the lightweightness of the whole unit and the controls which is four and the easeability of removing that bag is fantastic so those are my five key features that I love about this now I did save my side chute from my recycler before I sold it um, but this video is mainly to do a full service on this particular Honda um, the engine itself on the Toro uh, the air cleaner assembly on the back side which I know you cannot see yet until I get you reset up on my workbench to show you what I'm talking about but the air cap um, has broken and I knew that when I purchased it um, the parts are relatively inexpensive I believe uh, the air assembly housing the cap and a replacement filter with a fuel filter I'm wanting to say it was like 950 ten dollars it was relatively inexpensive so this video we're going to do a full tune-up so we are going to do spark plug air filter oil and sharpen a balance of blade that's going to be the four things that we're going to do today so let's get you set up on the workbench and we will go from there so i will be right back and we'll have you a close-up as to what we're doing now with this looks a little strange i know so i'm going to do my best to stay out of the camera so you guys can see just exactly what's going on but there is supposed to be a cap that goes on top of this so this is the air assembly which is also your air filter for your Honda I'm actually going to reuse this filter this is actually in really really good shape the person that I got it from actually used it and paid somebody at a professional shop um, what I mean by professional shop is somebody that's got a full business 
they tag their their lawn mowers with tags with the serial number on them and everything so they they took the initiative to make sure it was serviced properly at a location so with this we've got a replacement air filter so the difference is is our our cap so you notice the tab on this side over here is broke and this side is not and that's the difference from that versus this so I wanted to make sure that we take this apart so it comes with a new air filter I'm gonna save this for a future date and also came with a new cap I'm gonna install the new one I don't technically need it but I'm going to anyway so with this you're just gonna take off our two 10 millimeter bolts that is holding on the entire assembly and this actually holds the carburetor and everything on so take off your two 10 millimeter bolts they are extremely long and then the assembly is going to come off and should turn the fuel off first probably would have been wise now on the back side of this there's a there's also an air breather so take that tube off and then there's also a metal ring that's going to have a gasket on it the gasket faces inwards so we're going to take this off i'm going to start by putting the new gasket and metal bracket on so you have to make sure that you get these somewhat lined up again when you go to put this back together so we're going to start by getting our carburetor relatively close and what i would suggest is try and do this so you guys can see but it may not work very well I'm going to do this one piece at a time so run your bolt through just a little bit and it's going to help guide you with your pieces the carburetor is going to go next so now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side with the gasket first, that metal bracket, get that roughly in, slide the carburetor down a little bit to get that in, it's going to come through the back side, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to re-hook up our air vent hose, that looks good, maybe, our gasket that goes behind the carburetor and then our automatic choke assembly goes on above that kicker to this take your time go slow it is plastic that you're working with that looks good a little bit so that should be all nice and tight air filter goes on it almost looks like it goes on in reverse but it really doesn't um, a lot of these go in this way because of the way the cap is built so you're actually designed to put your filter on your cap first slide the bottom tabs in and then rotate 
and push and you'll get two nice firm clicks. So that is your air assembly for your carburetor. Next, we're going to replace our spark plug that's in the front. So with this, it is NGK part number one, or sorry, 7131, which is BPR6ES. And like I said, I use NGK on all of my spark plugs and actually, I also wrote on here, per the Honda manufacturer specifications, this engine is a GVC 160, and it holds 13.5 ounces of 10W30. So that's what we will be putting in for oil. So with spark plugs, just like anything else, take, take your spark plug boot off, and then remove your spark plug. Now these are on the longer side, so you notice it looks dirty on here, but what matters is on the inside, so it's actually nice and white. Looks good. That actually is a great sign that this motor is fantastic, which I know it is because I've been using it. And then slowly, by hand, start your new plug by hand that way you don't cross thread anything because if you try going with wrenches or power tools or anything crazy you could very easily cross thread it so set it to tighten you'll feel it snug up which is right about there and then a quarter turn that's all you need to do they don't have to be on crazy crazy tight so the next thing is just reinstall your, your spark plug boot. Should be good. And then what came out of this was also an NGK BPR6ES. So that is what whoever was servicing this before me put on this, which that right there is a great sign because they're using the exact same spark plug as what I suggest which tells me they're on the on what I would call a great path for products so that tells me they take care of their equipment they use the right pieces and not some aftermarket or something that they don't know what it is so the next step is the oil change portion of it so this one we're gonna have to reset up our camera because what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna start it up. We're gonna let it run for a few minutes. I want it to come up to a little bit of operating temperature. And then we will tip this over on its side and drain out the dipstick tube. So I will turn it around, we'll start it, let it idle for a couple minutes to get it up to temperature, and then we will do the drain. So I'll be right back. Now that we got you reset up, I have my drain pan nearby. We're going to go ahead and fire this up. I'm going to let it idle for, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds. And then we'll turn it off and start draining our fluids. So let's go ahead and give it a pull. that somewhat warmer 
the key to this is, is you just want to get it so that it's not extremely thick and you want to actually get all the gunk out of it so take your dipstick out set it aside and then what I'm gonna do suggest and do as well is kill your fuel and then do the best you can on getting this flipped over without spilling a whole lot which that unfortunately sometimes is better than said than done so go slow I may not get it all out, but you'll get most of it. And I know you can't tell how clear it is because it is on the murkier side, but honestly, it looks relatively clean for what I'm seeing coming out of it. It's another reason why you start it, is it thins out the oil, makes it easier to get all the oil out. Good enough for me. Set this back up right. And then I'm gonna readjust your camera back on the workbench so I can show you how I measure and pour oil. So let's go ahead and get you set up on the workbench. Now this is how I measure and pour my oils when I'm being precise. Um, is we're going to use a measuring cup that is designated specifically for this and you're going to notice it has fluid levels and ounces on one side and then what we're going to use in this particular video with this Honda engine is probably the best fully synthetic 10w30 that anybody can possibly buy which is the Amsoil synthetic motor oil and it's their signature series so that's the most important part they do have a couple different lines, and every line obviously means something a little bit differently. Um, I believe this is around $10, $11 a quart. Um, I am an AMS oil dealer, so I will link you to the description to my AMS oil account. It does not cost you a single extra penny to be able to purchase through my link. It just helps me get a little bit extra bonus that I can reuse to invest back into the YouTube for me to make better quality videos for you guys. So if you're in the market for Amsoil, check out the description below to the Amsoil account. So Amsoil is what I run on most of my vehicle engines unless it calls for straight SAE 30. So for example, like the Tecumseh engine that I had on the Toro Recycler, that was a, uh, a Tecumseh engine that calls for an SAE 30. Um, a lot of Briggs and Stratton's also call for SAE 30. Um, a lot of people run 10W30 in them. It's not going to hurt anything. I just try to stay with what the manufacturer recommends. And Honda recommends their Honda synthetic 10W30. But honestly, you're going to spend 10, 11, 12 dollars a quart for the Honda. I honestly trust the AMS oil a thousand times before I would trust any other oil when it comes to fully synthetics. So, next thing we're going to do is we know, based on, like I said, the research before, we need to do 13.5 ounces of oil. So, we're going to go for shoot, we're going to shoot for 13, so that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So, I'm going to shoot for that little mark, so that's 13 and a half right there. That's what we're going to go for for this. So take your quart, pop it open. Now unfortunately my workbench is not exactly level and yes that will affect the measurements but it will get it close. There's 12, there's 13 and a half. So with 13 and a half ounces I will show you what I mean by spending a little bit extra money on oil. You may or may not be able to see this, 
Actually, you should be able to. On the side of your quarts, there's indicators of how many ounces that, that are in here. So in a quart, you have 946 milliliters. So it says 28 here. By the time you get up to your one liter, you're actually going to be probably in the 32 ounce range. So if we're only using, let's just say 12 for example, or 13. If you're using 13, you only need 26 ounces. So a $11 gallon, or sorry, $11 a quart for the AMS oil, fully synthetic, hands down the best oil that you can purchase. You can get two oil changes with one quart. So an oil change is going to cost you roughly $5. So is your lawn mower's life and protection? Because that is the lifeline of your engine. Any air-cooled engine is oil and airflow. If you have bad of either one of those, you will have a poor running engine. So spend the money and get good quality oil. So we're going to take this and dump it in and we're going to do a check. Now, unfortunately, the way my driveway sits, uh, it is on a slope towards the road. So when I go to pour this in and do a check, it may not show 100%. But the best thing I can tell you when you're doing an oil change is trust your gut, which is one of the reasons why you want to measure your oil before you pour. So we are going in our dipstick tube. This is why I use a measuring cup with a spout because you can actually get this in here and slowly pour this in. You will not lose any oil doing it this way. Take your time, don't have to go fast. We got all night, or day, or morning, whatever time you decide to do this, doesn't matter. You got time. Not gonna get it all, but that's a little bit. It's not gonna be less than a half of an ounce. So now with Hondas, you do not have to push this all the way in to check the oil. So you don't have to go in and start cranking it down. You just check it, pull it in, check it out. Now with this, it's gonna read high because of the hill but it's showing right about right there and fill levels right there. So with it sitting on the slope like I was talking about, I am perfectly happy with this level because then if by the time that I level this deck out, made sure it was level and checked it, it would be smack dab right where it needs to be, which is why you always measure your oil before you put it in. So next step, is we are going to tilt this up on its side and we will get our air gun out and take the blade off. So with this, tilt it up on its side, and I do not know off the top of my head what size this is, but if I had to bet, it's 
probably 9 sixteenths, which that's exactly what it is. So grab your tool of choice. Oh, also forgot. Key safety feature, always remove your spark plug boot from your spark plug before you attempt to do anything with this because you do not want it accidentally starting. That's also another reason why I suggest you turn off your fuel. So take your 9 sixteenths, ah! you know, pop right off. So very simple, very easy, and this setup is exactly like your Toro recycler. So it's just a single nut with a bracket and your blade. So this particular blade is actually sharp. So I am not going to resharpen this because it is in great shape, which tells me this, when they took care of it before I purchased it, they did a great job of keeping this in great shape. So it goes back on the same way it came off. Always, always hand start this because if you do not, you will very easily strip, cross thread, break something, something you do not want to do. It's the nice thing about air tools. It's also the bad thing about air tools because you can do damage with anything that has a lot of power, especially torque. So you notice the blade's starting to spin. It's tight enough. You don't have to go crazy, crazy, crazy tight with this. So this air hammer, half inch air impact is a upcoming video that I am working on so this is just me doing some product testing so keep an eye out for this coming up but other than that that is how you do a full service on your Toro so again simple easy anybody can do it like I was saying anybody can do it Spark plug. Oh, keyword also spark plug. We forgot. Always plug your spark plug boot back in. The last thing you do. That's a big safety thing that I would suggest anybody do. So, new air box on the back side with our air filter. We've done an oil change. We've done a spark plug, and we've done, or at least we've checked our blade. So we are going to do a test by making sure it fires up and runs. So let's get the tools out of the way real quick, and then we will give it a game and make sure. We've got a runaway, runaway socket. But that's the nice thing about Honda engines is they are extremely simple to operate, but they just flat function and they're great to work with. <coughs> um, with this one, there's no linkages for chokes or throttles or anything like that. All you do is simply just pull back on your handle and it should pull. Once is it so if you guys like the video give me a thumbs up if you don't give me a thumbs down I use the thumbs to track down videos to figure out what you guys like and what you don't like for future videos also make sure you go slap the thumb the subscription I think it's in the top right corner top left wherever it is 
um, give me the slot for your subscription. Also, um, if you're interested in Amsoil, go check out the link down below for that. Um, also, I will send a link down below for the Amazon products that was purchased for this, which was the air filter box and assembly and all that, and the spark plug. Um, other than that, I believe that is everything, and you all have a fantastic and wonderful day. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.